So 200 is not going to be a psychological area, right? It's just an area that it really needs to confirm. And what's cool about this, this trade on the video, especially if you're an intraday trader. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, happy weekend everybody, and welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrade.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Forget, uh, please forgive the outfit. I am going to like 35 different kids sporting events and I'm not gonna change. <laughs> I'm not going to change, so forgive about the outfit. Anyway, guys, I uh, hope everybody's doing well. Uh, let's talk about the tape, right? Uh, if you've been watching this broadcast just for the last week or so, you saw the significance, again, uh, what technical analysis does. The scoreboard is cool. Again, it's water cooler talk, but the, 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 the definition of technical analysis and gathering data is for you to plan out your next move. And you kind of saw this plan out. Uh, and how really good and strong the bull market case has been in such a long time. Again, we had this uh, exhaustion channel uh, two weeks ago. The markets were tired. If you remember two weeks ago, literally every single day, we were sell by, sell by, sell by. Not that we believed that the market was going to crash, but the market was just very, very tired and needed a break. And here came, you know, here came July the 19th and, you know, the market gap down in true form of any bullish cycle. This is, you know, we've been in this bullish cycle um, since before Trump, right? Before Trump uh, became president. And what happened was it really does show you that the bull case is still alive. And I joke around all the time, buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip. It's, it's all fun and games until it ends. But so far it's proven that it hasn't ended. And the market got very, very strong, very decisive. Uh, the Qs reclaimed uh, 355 on this whole macro channel. Uh, if you look at the SPY, uh, they held the 50-day moving average. Again, look how many times it's tested the 50-day moving average in the last, well, let's see here. It's going back to January, February. It's going back to March, right? So March 25th, they tested the 50-day the, the moving average they held. On March, on excuse me, on May the 12th, they tested it, they held. On May the 19th, a week later, they tested it at 12. Uh, what day is this? June. They tested it at 12, tested it held. And once again, in true bull market form, they held again and put up this really, really big room, uh, big move. And if you look at the at the scoreboard, it actually does uh, kind of look, you know, really, really how aggressive it was. You have the NASDAQ up nearly 3%. Uh, the S&P up uh, about 2% for the week, really, really strong action. And the most important part of what we saw this week was everything rallied. Usually you'd look at a market and you turn around and say, well, it's just a small cap market that's rallying, right? Speculation, ah, it's just the energy stocks that are pulling everything up. Ah, you know, it's just segregated uh, to the semiconductors or maybe just into the cloud names. You had everything, you know, you had financials, uh, doing very, very well. I mean, look at the move on Goldman Sachs. It had a move from 349 uh, all the way to 375 in four sessions. That's a big deal, right? You don't see that all the time throughout the week. You see, so you had financials uh, going absolutely nuts. Even a name like IBM had, which again, 30, 40 years ago, IBM was like the creme de la creme, right? It was the market leader. You remember the first IBM laptop, it was like 98 pounds and it, it was like $8,000, right? Long gone, right? Long gone then. But, si but since then, you know, the company has been having struggles, right? They've, they've been missing, hit or miss very, very uh, frequently in quarters, but they had their best quarter probably in the last three, four years. It shows you how the dynamics of everything is. And the most impressive part for me, at least this week, because th these are the names uh, that we cover that we... Uh, really focus on is the NASDAQ 100, right? You have technology names and, you know, they could have broken, they could have rolled over and they could have confirmed this whole channel right back down. And we would have been having this conversation somewhere around here this week towards the end of the weekend, but they didn't, right? And that's the most important part. And this is kind of what we try to echo, especially to the newer traders 
don't guess, right? Don't guess. We, we had the opinion here that the market was weak. We had the opinion it continued to be weak. We had the opinion that ranges are starting to lose in a lot of names. But as soon as they held that level, your opinion has to change because the dynamics have changed. Um, your thought process needs to change. The, the overall spectrum of the overall puzzle has changed and you have to flip. You have to flip very, very quickly and never paint yourself in a corner. And what we've seen from that bottom, that remount of the 355 levels on the queues to kind of where we are now is a dr dramatic statement by the bulls. Uh, we're knee deep right now uh, into earnings season. This week we have the mother load, right? We have the Super Bowl of earnings. Let's see who we got. We got Tesla on Monday, right? We got Tesla on Monday. We got, uh, let's see everybody else on Monday. Uh, Tesla, Tesla's gonna be the one, right? Tesla's on Monday. Tuesday's a Super Bowl, or at least uh, the conference finals. You have Microsoft, Google, Apple, AMD, uh, GE, Starbucks that got upgraded on Friday. We'll get to the pivots in a second. We got Visa, we got TDOC, we got JetBlue, we got Triple M. We got a lot of stuff going on. Wednesday, you got Facebook, you got, uh, let's see here, you got Facebook, you have Boeing, you have Shopify, had a monster, monster move. Uh, this week, you got PayPal, Qualcomm, Spotify, you know, in the following week, you got Square, Roku. And we'll t let's talk about Roku for a second, right? Usually, I you know, I follow Roku. It's one of the names that we trade all the time. We follow. Ro Can we talk about for a second what the hell happened to Roku on Friday? Right? What in the name of God happened on Friday on Roku? And, and I'm, I was looking at headlines and I just couldn't, I said, well, it has to be an upgrade somewhere. There has to be chatter. Maybe are they going private this weekend? Is somebody like, what the hell happened to Roku? You had no news. You had no upgrades, no initiation, no materialistic news that came out. You had no chatter, but yet the stock out of nowhere. And I'm talking about, it, it didn't even take out a level until you really looked up on Friday. I looked at Friday, I go, well, why is Roku at 440, right? And I saw it towards like, 10 o'clock, 10, 15, they started buying like the 440 calls and the 445 calls. I go, I go, I don't get it. I go, let's wait for a dip. All right. That's the first thing I said. Let's wait for a dip. That dip never came. That, I mean, it's, that dip did not come. And I don't know what's going on. Would I be shocked if some news came out on Monday uh, after, you know, this video is released and all of a sudden you hear that blah, 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 blah is, is, is you know, interested in Roku. I wouldn't shock me. Look at this move. Just an absolute insane move. If anybody has seen any you know, really news on, on Roku. I would love to, I would love to, you know, to know what it was, but an, an absolute move, crazy move. And that really reflects of what's been going on with the NASDAQ, uh, NASDAQ 100 names. You have big melt ups on a lot of names. You have this, this crazy candle on random times on different names. And this is where we are right now. So uh, you could turn around and say, well, this rally is being led by, you know, five or six NASDAQ names. Okay. Right. You got to participate in those names. You know, when you look at uh, this week, what happened, you saw, you know, really nice move on Apple. You, know, you saw Apple, you saw Microsoft breakout, uh, Amazon, we've been talking about a nausea uh, from this five day remount of 3593, uh, went to almost 3670 in two sessions. You know, you have, you have look, look what Facebook did, right? Look what Facebook did yesterday on the strength and the tailwind of a snap, right? On a snap, really good quarter on a Twitter. Uh, really good quarter of my e-signal again would would, would uh, update would be really really nice the dimensions right now the dimensions right now in this market are very very strong uh, can they continue to rally uh, into next week ahead of all these earnings yeah why not right why not look we're not we're not naive to think the market uh, can, can come crashing down at any time but at least for now let's continue right let's continue uh, the dynamics let's continue the themes uh, continue to kind of leave the extended names alone, right? Like I'm, I really have no interest anymore on Amazon, except for exception for dips. But if you look at, there's so many names popping out of channels in the bottom of the range uh, going into the next week. Do you really need to keep on riding Amazon, right? If you have a runner, you have a runner. But do you really need to start really focusing on uh, Facebook after you know after this gigantic move in four days, right? Facebook went from 334. To nearly three, you know, 376 in four days. Do you really need to figure? If you have a runner, that's great. If you're buying them on weakness into rising 60 minute support, that's fantastic. But I think you have to start looking at other names that are coming out of tight channels, whether macro or otherwise, and continue the theme, right? You get, you get a breakout, you get a follow through, and you get a third day run. You get a breakout, you get a follow through, you get a third day run. And at this juncture of the market, we're looking for 
the first day bounces either on Roku, right? So if obviously on Roku, if it doesn't gap up on, on Monday, would it shock me to go up another 20 points after what I saw on Friday? No. But the value play on Roku for Monday would be buying it for a dip. I know the word dip didn't exist Friday, right? It was no downtick day for Roku. But if there's a dip into Roku on Monday into rising 60 minute support, that's the value, right? I'm not buying this thing. Uh, you know, I'm not buying this thing on, on Monday up 27 points if it gaps up. But a dip into rising support going red to green, that could be a really, really strong play. Um, but let's concentrate, right? Let's start looking at names that didn't rally, right? Or at least didn't make that big macro uh, reclaim yet, right? And if you look at names, for example, like TTD uh, got upgraded on Friday. And this thing is literally, and had, first of all, had a very, very strong day on Friday, uh, put in its average range. And if you look at this whole channel here, this looks really, really good. I have to check their earnings date, but this looks really, really good. If this thing starts really confirming this channel, and again, assuming they don't have earnings in the next day or so, look at look how much room you have. You have a lot of room coming. You know, you still have a lot of room coming in the trade. Look at a company, uh, look at a stock like Match.com, right? Match.com, right? Same thing. You have a very nice channel um, that started on June the 24th. You have a long base. You have big volume starting to expand. If this thing is above the channel, again, look how much room you have. Again, check earnings. Even a stock like Dix.com, right, or Dix Sporting Goods. I don't want to freak anybody out. I know everybody's sensitive. Um, but, right, look at this channel here on, on, on Dix Sporting Goods, right? Look, at they finally broke out on Friday. Uh, I think the value play, like, I, I don't think you want to buy Dix into strength. That's what said, right? But you want to buy it on the dip. So if you get a dip, a rising 60-minute dip on Dix, it looks good. And if it starts confirming yesterday's channel, again, maybe it finally starts its next leg up. And even a name like NVIDIA, right? So NVIDIA has just been a monster, had a huge run. Uh, we started seeing, and again, granted, the stock has been on a big run, but you can see there's a really cool channel here developing. And what's cool about this channel is it's right around the $200 level. So if that's a psychological number, and I, I, again, I use, people use the word psychological on social media, it really doesn't mean anything. They're just, you're just going to find the most liquidity at that number. You see investors selling, you're going to be seeing funds selling, you're going to see buys, uh, funds buying, you're going to be retail buying. So 200 is not going to be a psychological area, right? It's just an area that it really needs to confirm. And what's cool about this, this trade on the video, especially if you're an intraday trader, if it fails at 200 level, right, it's kind of rejected there several times. If it fails at 200 level, just get out of the trade, right? It's going to be very, very quickly. It has to, especially that quote unquote psychological level. If it busts through, you have a potential going to the upper Bollinger Band of 211 before earnings. And on the downside, you have very, very limited risk because if it, if it stalls out there the third time around, well, why would you want to be in the trade? So we're, we're, we're trying to, to think. We're trying to use our brains and take advantage of the strength of the market without the exposure or overextension on some names. Can those names continue? Absolutely. Can those names continue to get bought on dips? You need to. That's the only way to get into those trades right now. But for the stocks that are still sitting there, that are on the verge to kind of join, quote unquote, the party, that's where you want to focus. And look at a stock like Chewy, right? Look at a name like uh, Chewy. I use Chewy all the time. Again, for all you guys who are pet lovers that have not been on Chewy, we have, you know, we have a a month, uh, we have a month, month to month system there. I think my, my wife orders there from month to month. F fantastic company, right? You got dog food, you got cat food, you got all that crap, right? And but look at this thing. Look how close this thing is is to, to reclaiming, right? Look how close this thing is reclaiming macro supplies and putting it in a move. So if you put in your work this weekend, you will find a lot of names that are not up, you know, twenty six dollars on, you know, for a two three session. You'll still find a lot of value. And if that value confirms, you still have a really good advantage of joining this whole participation parade that technology um, is having without having the overextended risk on a lot of these names. So going into Monday, you know, of course, you have to be bullish and you have to be bullish until you're not. Right. And that's the whole point of technical analysis. It's tell you which way uh, the wind is blowing. So let's talk about some pivots. Um, let's talk about some pivots from uh, Friday's session. Um, you had a lot of stuff here. You had a lot of stuff going on. Um, you had a lot of aggressive moves, uh, even a name uh, like Netflix. And this is what's kind of cool about, uh, and we talk about this all the time. This is what's kind of cool about pivots. I had a short on Netflix to the downside, um, and, and it, was, it, was you know, it was decent. It was nothing huge, but it was decent. 
and it held the double bottom and this thing went red to green and had to put push as well. So you could take advantage on both sides. That's the cool part about trading technology, especially the beta names that have a huge uh, average true range because the, the channels expand and, and unfortunately not every single group or not every single uh, industry can, can, can say that, but the, the beta names you absolutely can. So let's talk about uh, Friday's session and da, 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 da. okay, let's see here. Uh, yeah, so yeah, so fantastic move, uh, fantastic move on. Let's talk about Amazon. You know, thirty five ninety three. That was the pivot from Thursday. It just absolutely exploded. And I said, look, congratulations, to all you guys who have it overnight. If you can get above uh, thirty six fifty seven, you could get a push into the thirty six seventies. It traded at the 3668. So a really, really strong name. Um, I still like Zoom, uh, didn't confirm. I still like NVIDIA, didn't confirm. Uh, LRCX was very sporadic, uh, was very sporadic on Friday. And he put up like a $4 candle, but it, it, it was a very, very, very inconsistent trader on Friday. That's the best way of saying it. I didn't trade it myself. It was just a little too wide for me. The cool part about how strong this market is. Think about what happened and, and think about the strength of this tape in, the, in, this, uh, uh, in this matter. You had Intel missed earnings, semis didn't move. You had Texas Instruments missed earnings, semis didn't move. That shows you how strong this tape is and how investors are still very, very uh, committed uh, to this rally. So let's talk about some obviously other names. Crowd went nuts, uh, 266 and 270 macro pivots, uh, macro channels needs to build. Uh, here was crowd. So it took out the 266. It took out the 270 and went to almost 273. Really, really strong move there. Uh, big move there. Uh, ILMN. I wasn't watching ILMN. What the hell did it do? ILMN. What the hell did it do? ILMN took out 490. Oh, I didn't see it. I didn't see it at all. It took out 490, closed at the high of the day for almost 496. I didn't see it. This thing looks still... Still looks really, really good. If you got some guys, good job there. Uh, Twitter, I just scalped. Um, I, excuse me, on Twitter. Uh, Starbucks, I just scalped. I, it, it's so I haven't traded Starbucks, which, which is so ironic because I go to Starbucks twice a day. Um, I scalped it for some cash flow. It had a decent move uh, towards the middle of the day. Uh, nothing, you know, nothing, you know, nothing huge. They report next week. Uh, here is the opening range print right over here. So I scalped into this area, came back in, and then reclaimed it. Went. Uh, traded to like 126.30s. Uh, wasn't a clean move. Okay, it wasn't a clean move at all. But you know, I scalped some, scalped some for some cash flow. Whatever. Nothing. Nothing big. Nothing there. Uh, Twitter is 74. Never got there. But there was a sneakier pivot uh, before 74. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, too low 410. I only want a couple of bucks here. Uh, the, here's the sneaky pivot I was talking about. Twitter for experienced traders only. 72.20 needs to build. It went to like 73.40s. Uh, Boeing 224, uh, 224, 20 needs to build. You know, just got to that area. Never gave you a second entry. Uh, Tesla, you know, Tesla. I made a cup of coffee on Tesla on the short. They just wouldn't break it. They just would not break that 40 level. And I was watching it. I was watching this 40 level, and you'll see here right here. I was watching this 40 level it held once it held twice. So it, it went down, it went down only like a dollar and a little less than a dollar. And they just couldn't break it. Couldn't break it. Couldn't break it. The futures are getting stronger. So I covered it for a cup of coffee and it reclaimed the level here. Here's the interesting part going into Monday's session. You usually would see really aggressive bets being made, especially ahead of earnings. Uh, we really did not see that on Friday. Okay. We didn't see really aggressive call buyers. We really didn't see uh, very aggressive put buyers. Um, the question is, again, nobody knows what's going to happen on earnings on Monday, right? If you really knew, you'd be all in on every single penny you have. Nobody knows, right? Even if the earnings are good, we don't know how the stock is going to react. If they're bad, we don't know how the stock is going to react. So, you know, before everybody says, well, Tesla's going to do this, nobody knows. Let's be honest with ourselves. Nobody knows. But it will be interesting to see. But at least we do know, the one thing we do know, we know the channels to the upside. We know the channels to the downside. And those channels we will be watching uh, post earnings. So we will see exactly what happens with Tesla. Uh, 505, I, we actually shorted it before the 505 area. I was short in the 506s uh, on the opening range. It went to like a 504 and change. Um, I covered, you know, I covered most of it. Just, it just didn't, it just didn't crack. It just reclaimed that 505 really quickly again. But there was a pivot back to the upside. Uh, crowd, big move, uh, to, went to all the way to 272, exploding. Again, take on the way down. It just really wasn't a big move on the way down. That was the only problem. 
Uh, Starbucks, 126 on deck. Nice little move there. Uh, Netflix, okay, now here's a, a trade right back to the top. It held uh, the bottom of the range. Uh, has not been green since earnings for experienced traders only. 512 needs to build for a possible move to 515. And here was uh, Netflix, right? It took out that 512 and actually went to 517. So nice move there on Netflix. It was actually pretty seamless going red to green. It wasn't really a, a, lot of, um, uh, a lot of resistance there. Uh, just a reminder, keep watching the workshops, blah, 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 blah. Here, 515s on deck. And that is about it. So that's it. I mean, it was a pretty good week, uh, pretty good week, a lot of good action. The most important part is, again, get prepared for this week. Do a lot of research. Uh, put in the manpower, right? Manpower, woman power. I don't want to be, uh, I don't want to paint anybody in the, into a corner again. It's a very, very sensitive world. You got to be careful what you say. Um, but anyway, to put in the time, guys, uh, put in the research. You're, a lot of you guys are still in your developing stages. The first two, three years, you're still trying to figure out what you are in this business. Okay. It's, those, these are very formidable years. Uh, the most important part in those first three years is number one, be very level-headed. Don't rush your progress. Don't put a lot of pressure on yourself. And most important, understand that everything clicks in time. Time is the greatest teacher. Uh, time is the greatest uh, example of what not to do when you can pick your spots to omit in your, in your trading. And the most important part is, like I say, every single video, stay in business. Guys, have a great weekend. God bless. Stay blessed. And I'll see you all on Monday.